Hi and welcome. My name is Kartika Naya and you are watching Synchro Shakti. Now today is another story time episode where I'm going to drop some sort of value or some sort of moral uh, to you through a story. And um, this story again is something that I received by my mom, shared it to me on WhatsApp and it was a story based on mindfulness so being a mindfulness practitioner as well as a teacher and having you know four batches of mindfulness students under me i thought this was a great opportunity to set the tone uh, for my fifth batch as well as for those who are generally interested in studying mindfulness themselves now mindfulness will help you in everything in everything if you're just here for law of attraction stuff Mindfulness will help you in that as well because it teaches you detachment and teaches you to live in the moment instead of in the madness of your own being. So having said that, I will walk you through a story which I will paraphrase because the story is very long but I will keep it short by trying to paraphrase it. Um, the story is of um, a fakir, uh, let's just call him a sage, uh, Nagarjuna, who he was you know, well sought after spiritual, um, you know, monk, a sage. And all the people who were true spiritual seekers were big fans of this particular sage, Nagarjuna. And in this kingdom in which he was staying, the queen of that kingdom was in love with him. And one day she invited him. And so he was a sage, he didn't have any clothes on. All he had was this bowl, right, in which he would collect food or money. And that was the only thing that he had in his possession. So the queen was a very big fan of his and, you know, a devotee of his, you know, spiritual path. So she invited him into the palace and she said, you know, I have one request of your, uh, from you. Can I please have your bowl? Because your bowl, the wooden bowl, has your presence in it. And I would like to use that as my altar to pray, to connect to the divine through your presence. Uh, can I have that bowl so Nagarjuna is like yeah sure why not and she says in exchange for this can you take my gift or will you take my gift of this golden bowl that is bejeweled it's got all these rare gems and jewels in it it's made out of gold will you take this as my offering to you and to Nagarjuna a wooden bowl and a gold bejeweled bowl it's all just a bowl to him because he's a spiritual man he didn't see a difference between the two so he took the bowl and he left the palace when he left the palace and he was walking down the street a common thief looked at him and saw that this guy he's naked he's walking on the street he's got nothing with him except this precious bowl and he thinks to himself, it's so easy for me to take this bowl away from this man. I can easily steal this. So let me follow him, okay? So the thief starts following Nagarjuna as he's walking towards where he lives. And he was living in this ruined temple, this ancient ruined temple in the kingdom. And so one, when he gets into the temple, the thief sees that the temple has no roof it has no walls it's just this ruined ancient temple and nagarjuna basically would sleep there and nagarjuna obviously because he's mindful he was aware that somebody was following him and he also knew that that the thief was following him for the bowl and not for him you know not to get some spiritual insight from him so what Nagarjuna did was he enters the ruined temple and he takes that gold bowl and he throws it outside for the thief to take. And the thief is very well aware of this. He's like, okay, he just threw this golden, bejeweled, precious bowl to me as though it was nothing to him. I mean, do people like this actually exist in our world where material things and attachment doesn't mean anything to them? They're totally happy just being? Like, is that even a thing? So he was so frazzled in that moment when this occurred that he walked into the temple and he told Nagarjuna, he's like, thank you so much for this bowl, but I can't help but wonder how is it that it doesn't matter to you this beautiful golden bejeweled thing it's worth so much of money how is it that it doesn't matter to you how can i be more like you you know i'm i'm a thief for me material things and this is what i thought was 
was the epitome of of life was to keep get, getting all of these things and i want to steal I, i live a dark life how can i be like you where where you know none of these things actually matter where i'm not suffering uh, for constant money and constant you know jewelry and you know I, i'm not i'm not suffering i want to be free how do i be like you how many years would it take me to reach your level of you know detachment and your level of peace and and happiness with the present moment how many years would it take me to reach there and nagarjuna looks at him going what do you mean how many years you can do it right now and he's like don't you know i'm a thief i've been a thief for so many years for the last 40 years i've been uh, stealing not just from regular people but i've been stealing from the the royals i've been stealing from the palace you know the police can't catch me because i'm such a good thief you know I, don't you know my history uh, for so many years i've been a thief how can i suddenly in this instant suddenly become liberated of my darkness how can i be liberated of my need to steal and nagarjuna looks at him going if there is a house and that house has been in darkness for many centuries nobody ever lit a candle in that house that house was in darkness for many many centuries if somebody went inside and lit a candle will the darkness tell the candle that no 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 i have been living in this house for so many centuries i am darkness i cannot leave because i have been living in this house for so many centuries and you can't affect me will the darkness say that to the light and the thief is like no so he's like how does that work if you put the light in a dark room whether that room was dark for many many centuries or dark for two days the light will still consume the room the darkness will be transformed into light so the thief understands that darkness is simply the absence of light so he says so should i stop stealing should i stop my dark you know the dark behaviors that i do and nagarjuna is like that's not my decision to make you have free will you do what you are inspired to do so nagarjuna is like but every time i went to a uh, sorry the thief says every time i went to a saint or a sage or a spiritual leader he told me that you must first give up stealing and only then can i initiate you into the spiritual path nagarjuna said then you didn't go to saints you went probably to <laughs> thieves themselves you know because no actual spiritual teacher will tell you that you've got to stop stealing before you can enter the spiritual path it doesn't work that way so he, now the thief is like what do i do so nagarjuna tells him just do this one thing just do the do live the way of buddha the way of buddha is basically the way of mindfulness the way of zen all you got to do is when you have the urge to go steal just breathe for some time before you go steal just breathe and then that's it any time you're doing anything just sit down and breathe focus on your inhale exhale that's all you need to do and then he sends the thief away so the thief is like okay fine i'll try what you said and he goes away 15 days later the thief comes back to nagarjuna and he says you have completely changed everything about me i don't know what you have done but you've put me in one big dilemma my dilemma is this every time i want to go steal i focus on my breath and suddenly i'm grounded i'm connected i am present and i don't have the need or that feeling to go steal but then when i'm stealing i don't have the the presence to sit down with my breath So when I'm breathing I can't steal when I'm stealing I can't breathe or I can't focus on my breath so I have two choices I can either live unconsciously in darkness and never be connected to consciousness or I can be conscious and happy and present and joyful and live a truly amazing life fulfilled here and now instead of having to steal to feel fulfilled temporarily and so it showed me that there's choice in life i can choose to live unconsciously or i can choose to live consciously and the choice has always been in my hand okay so moral of the story is if you're somebody who's consumed with the habit of constantly being in your mind constantly suffering constantly going into negative patterns constantly behaving the same way or you have addictions or you steal or you have you know you're doing things that are just not in alignment with your own 
what's inspired your own conscious experience of life then learn and know that you always have a choice to be in the conscious space and live consciously live happy live present live joyful and not live for possessions because even though we do i teach law of attraction here a lot of this you've got to understand if you're coming from that ego place of saying that getting that relationship is going to fulfill me or getting that money is going to fulfill me nothing can fulfill the ego the ego is like this bottomless pit the more you consume the more you the things that you constantly want 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 the more ego is satisfied for 2 seconds and then it's dissatisfied again always know that you have choice in life to be happy or to be unhappy you always have that choice and you make that choice all right and mindfulness will teach you the way of the simple way of living in consciousness living a conscious lifestyle will teach you right from wrong you don't need to do tapas you know um penance for 100 years in the forest for you to start becoming closer to the divine you can be closer to your consciousness to the divine now through the practice of mindfulness Okay again I'm not selling you my course I'm selling you the idea that you can be happy now you don't have to suffer in life you don't need you know go for whatever you want to manifest go for it I manifest things myself but if I have it or don't have it does not cause me suffering if the relationship I want is not is is not there right now not going to cause me suffering but I know many of you guys are writing to me every day saying my parents to marry this guy this guy won't allow me to do this my girlfriend did this and i can't i'm depressed i'm depressed i get a million messages from you guys saying the same things and you all are causing your own suffering because you're not happy with what you have right now when you are happy with what you have right now then the universe gifts you more cool things but when you are looking for other things to fulfill you and give you happiness then you'll forever be looking and never truly satisfied so that was my story today i hope that made sense for you guys uh, just a parting note of course i was talking about mindfulness i have a link in the in the description below for the fifth batch of mindfulness i know there wasn't supposed to be a fifth batch but it's taking me a little bit time to make a digital mindfulness course so i'm still doing live courses if you're interested in in living the mindful conscious way of life and being in true peace here and now then i would suggest you look at the link in the description and i will see you guys soon Thank you so much for watching. I love you all. Namaste.